this crackdown on illegal immigration, this initiative, is not going to cause those problems. You can come up, and Mr. Jenkins can come up with all the excuses you want not to support this crackdown, Chairman, but I'm going to be we supporting We are not you. saying well, that, that, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Let me, and let me say real quick. Right <laughs> Whoa. I was very troubled at the way that the matter came up. It seemed to me that it was clearly raised from a perspective of immediately polarizing and dividing this community and for one person's or two people's particular benefit in the election. There are a host of other issues that affect all of us in Prince William County, starting with the issue of traffic. And we need to get beyond um, what has been an approach over the last 10 months of, as the chairman calls it himself, throwing bombshells out into the community in terms of concepts and then polarizing that community as opposed to looking at uh, deliberate ways that we can improve county policy. But we continue to win these battles so we win the war. So, Chairman Short, right. please yeah. Yeah. To make all of our citizens safer. That's right. People that are here illegally are illegal. The rhetorical framework is one that's designed to get a small group of people out to vote because they are committed to something that, that um, is a deep-seated issue. But well, why the federal government has failed and why Prince William County and other localities have to pick up the slack? There's no question that in terms of people getting out to vote, anger is a very strong motivator. The problem is that anger does very little in terms of providing leadership as a government official. We need all of your support. we got a tough election. He may be okay at ginning up anger and polarizing people, but what he has shown over the last 10 months is a complete ineffectiveness in terms of leading. Mark these words. We are going to repel this invasion. One way or another, it will be repelled. You can either be part of that repulsion or you can be part of the other side. Naturally, the common people don't want war, but after all, it is the leaders of a country who determine the policy, and it's always a simple matter to drag people along. All you have to do is tell them they are being attacked, think of what you just heard by the speaker before me, and denounce the pacifists for lack of patriotism and for exposing the country to danger. It works the same in every country. If you don't recognize it, that was Hermann Goring just before he committed suicide at Nuremberg. There has been a concern all along that because people might have an accent or because they were not Caucasian, that they might be swept into the net of regulations that would be adopted because people would think they were illegal. I am opposed to illegal immigration. That's never been an issue with me. But the way the dialogue came forward made it sound that anybody who was concerned about issues of whether people were documented or not had nothing positive to contribute to the discussion on alternatives as to how to address the issue. We ended up with an increased polarization and we ended up with on one hand people being considered hate mongers, on the other side being considered apologists for an illegal condition in terms of lack of documents. That's not the way government should function. The board must be very careful in how it proceeds and how it speaks. The board must exercise fiscal responsibility, it must exercise community responsibility and not divide the community, and it must not further damage our economic future. Turning an issue of enforcement into emotional grandstanding is irresponsible. We are not in a boxing ring. We are in the court of state, national, and international opinion.